Hello everyone, welcome to Automation Talks. It's been a while and I am thrilled to be reconnecting with all of you again. In the past three years, I have been deeply involved into some other activities, so I couldn't post any video, a single video over here. My apologies for that. For those who are new here, uh, myself Prakash Nakhade and I do share some test automation insights on this YouTube channel. I would love to hear from you uh what topics you are interested in any particular challenges you are facing in test automation and uh, you'd like uh, the challenges to be addressed or for any uh, challenges in general you guys are facing having said this let's get ahead uh, go forward with uh, my today's topic for this video various methods to compare drop down values using selenium now before before we get started uh, let us try to understand why it is really important to perform the validation of drop down values inside uh, you know your application it's obvious uh, if my web application or in fact any kind of application is having certain values in the drop down obviously they are for certain functionalities if the values are not as expected definitely my application is not going to behave as it is supposed to providing me or providing a user a very bad experience my business logics are gonna fail um, let, let's take an example where you know your web your application is talking to some other system some third-party system or your in-house systems where there are multiple integrations so the data integration is gonna fail the data integrity checks are gonna fail if your drop down values or if your field values are not gonna match it is also very important in in, in case of cross browser testing if the drop down values are appearing in all the browsers in all the cases it is again very important in case of localization and internationalization to verify if my drop down contains all the values now it looks very simple when i when i talk about it it is just verifying the drop down values <coughs> but you know say my drop down contains hundreds of values 200s of values it is really difficult you know to verify each and every value the spelling of each and every value for each and every instance of testing that i am doing so i mean considering all these aspects it is really important uh, you know to perform the validation of uh, drop down values to compare the drop down values against my expectations with this let's go ahead and get started um, I use Eclipse for my uh, test automation and uh, here I have a class drop down values validation. So um, I'm going to uh, work on or demonstrate basically a three methods over here. So the first method is obviously normal using your for loop or for each loop. The second method I'm going to use uh, uh, list, and in the third method I'm going to use set. I'm going to demonstrate all this method. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with uh, the traditional method or the very commonly used method which is loop but I'll again come to drawback of this method uh, but let's get started uh, how I'm working on this okay so the example that I'm gonna pick is uh, demo application what I have on this demo.automationtalks.com <laughs> so this is a select menu uh, and I have this drop downs. Uh, so this drop down looks a very simple drop down, which is a standard select class. If I go and inspect, uh, you see it is a select drop down, and which is having a standard options. No problem. This is gonna work for me perfectly. The second drop down, what you see over here, if I inspect it, it takes me to the span, and here you see it as a select, but it is having style display none, meaning this is not uh, gonna work with your standard select class. So we are gonna talk about both the cases. How both the scenarios we are going to work with okay let's go ahead and get started with the first use case for this first drop down okay before that let me okay so let me create a web driver instance and as i said i'm gonna use the url what i mentioned over here Okay. Let's create a web element for the drop down. Uh, 
I suppose it should have an ID, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Let me create object of select class because it's a select standard drop down coded with select tag. Okay, DD element. Now, if I do OS dot get options, this method will give me a list of all the web elements or list. Uh, in fact, from this list of web elements, I would be able to extract, uh, you know, all the options that are available in the drop down. Let me get this and I'm gonna store this inside a list of web elements. Okay, now I have this ELES where I have all the options or let me rename it as an options, options elements. Okay, now what I want to do is, okay, now before before I perform any validation, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, my drop down, uh, I mean, I want to set my expectation, okay, my drop down should contain Java, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, PHP. So uh, what I want to do is, or what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna define one string where I'm gonna perf I'm gonna store all these comma separated values. For example, let's say this is my these are my expected values. Expected values are Java, C, C++, C Sharp, and whatever uh, you know drop down contents. Now the reason why I stored it into a, a semicolon separated because in real time I'm gonna pull all this information from somewhere from my data storage could be my Excel or JSON, right? So in my Excel. Say I have a column called as expected values and there I have all these, you know, semicolon separated values that the all these values I'm going to compare against my expected values. Uh, sorry, these are expected. I'm going to compare it against my actual values, which is present into my, um, you know, application. Now, uh, one simple check I can add, I can just compare the size uh, if the size of these expected values and size of this optional element are equal then my you know drop down values could be matching if it is not matching then probably i can you know uh, throw an exception there itself so in simple term if you know expected uh, expected values dot size length okay uh, I'd, I'd say is is not equal to um, options dot size okay uh, in this case I'm gonna throw an exception uh, I'll, I'll just say something okay but we can have some meaningful message I'll just say count count not matching Okay, so this is my first validation. If this validation itself fails, then probably I need not to move further. Okay, very simple. Next, now I'm gonna, if, if let's say if this validation pass, okay, I'm gonna perform my further check. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iterate over all these expected values. If my, you know, uh, <coughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go through one by one Java, yeah, I'll check if the Java is present into this drop down. Okay, if the C++ is present into this option, C sharp is present into this option and so, right? So for that, I'm gonna use a for loop, okay? Int i is equal to zero or in fact, uh, you know, I can, okay, or let, let me go to uh, for loop only. I'll tell you the reason why I'm going to for loop. i less than expected values dot length and I plus plus okay <coughs> now let me get the um, actual value okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a string actual actual value 
is equal to now how I'm gonna extract the actual value is from this options because in this options I have all the values so what I'm gonna do is options dot get I that is I'm gonna get the first index then dot get text so this will give me the web element from the web element I'm gonna get the text okay I'm gonna get the text uh, probably if required I can perform the trim operation so that you know if there are any leading or trailing places um, those can be trimmed okay uh, now I want to check if my actual value you know uh, is equal to the expected value okay now I have my actual value over here and this is my expected value and my expected value is semicolon separated so I should be splitting these values based on the semicolon uh, so what I'm gonna do is um, you know for better comparison I'm gonna store this into uh, array list okay so before I convert this into array list what I'm gonna do is uh, expected uh, values dot split and I'm gonna split it with semicolon and this is gonna return me a string array I'll just say something for now okay and then I'm gonna create an array list and it is going to be of type let's say string I'll say exp list is equal to okay instead of creating in this way uh, because I already have all my values into this string array I'm just gonna use arrays dot as list and I'm gonna pass str okay in fact even uh, rather than passing it str what I can do is I can directly copy paste over here and that's pretty much so this is how I converted my semicolon separated values into a array list okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna perform a simple validation if my expected list dot contains if it contains actual value what I can do is I can use not equal to okay and here I want to add uh, you know um, what I should be doing here uh, because I want to count the mismatches so what I'm gonna do is okay let me create one array list for you know um, counting the mismatches what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a list of type string and I'll say mismatches is equal to new array list my bad new error list and we are good okay now if it is not equals meaning there is a mismatch so what I'm gonna do is under mismatches I'm gonna add something and here I'll say I'll put some meaningful message okay so something like uh, expected value uh, now how can I get my expected value um, okay our uh, Let me put some meaningful message over here uh, say actual value I mean again this, this will differ okay person to person how he want to put it so just like whatever I am feeling right now I'm just gonna add it but this can be again different so I'm just gonna say actual value this um, is not in expected list ideally this this could have been uh, you know reverse ideally we compare expected with actual but the way how we are writing the code is gonna you know in opposite direction but I think that's okay so this is my expected values okay and uh, I think that's pretty much so once I run this code uh, you know this will iterate over all the values of expected and you know if it is not present my mismatches will be uh, printed over here so what I'm gonna do is at the end uh, I'm just gonna print I'm just gonna check if you know uh, mismatches is empty okay if mismatches I, I would say rather if mismatches is not empty then again I'm, I'm just gonna you know throw some exception not matching for now I'm just gonna say not matching 
but you know you can put something meaningful okay and if it is I'm just gonna say matching okay and uh, yeah I think that's pretty much okay let's go ahead and run it okay I think there is going to be a problem yeah count is mismatching I get it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, you know what I mentioned over here is expected values length that is going to be the length of this which is going to be quite higher so ideally I should be checking the size of this uh, you know here here okay and then here as well I should be picking the same okay let's give a try let me stop this you know it has launched the browser and now it is telling it is matching okay let's give it a try and uh, let's say let us add one more value over here let's say you know um, uh, rust let's try to run this so now I'm expecting seven values but in actual there are only six values there is no rust present and currently it is telling me count is not matching okay so what I'm gonna do is let me just go ahead and print if it is not matching okay so let's say um, I'm just gonna say mismatches I'm just gonna print mismatches let's go ahead and run it I mean obviously uh, wherever I have this exceptions or this messages there has to be proper meaningful you know uh, reporting in place and it shows the count is not matching and uh, okay didn't print mismatches count not matching or is it picking this count no okay yeah obviously it will pick this count that's true because uh, we have this first condition itself where count is not matching so count is not matching let's go ahead and make this change instead of PHP I'm just gonna make it as PHP 1 because I want to see this mismatches array, uh, mismatches array list okay so it is telling you PHP is not present in the expected list expected list is PHP 1 and this is how I can perform I'm in the you know the drop down value validation where I have all my expected values over here and this is like I'm trying to get my expected um, you know sorry actual values now this is like a very legacy approach and you know a very lengthy approach and you see this for loop and this if and lot of conditions right and again let's assume that I have 200 plus you know values in my drop down uh, the iteration iteration count is very high right so we have a very simple approaches where we can use uh, you know uh, some advanced uh, you know Java expressions that we have in um, Java 8 like your lambda and stream so that is what I'm gonna talk in my next approach where we are gonna perform directly comparison of you know list to list or set to set or even in fact in this particular case as well instead of getting in this particular way you can get it directly uh, you know um, with the help of lambda and st stream api and lambda expression we'll talk about it in my next video uh, so till then um, thanks for watching to this video and i'll continue the rest of the part of this video in my next video Thank you.